Broncos put on full pads Tuesday and again Thursday, and that meant Denver ramped up to another level this week as they head into the second half of training camp. This is the MHR News Room, the latest of what's going on in Broncos country. With Mile High Reports, Lori Lattimore Volkman. Broncos country, I'm Lori Lattimore Volkman with the Roundup, and we have a lot to highlight just as we go past the halfway point in Broncos training camp. Thursday, which was day eight of Broncos camp, was in pads, and it was a really good day for the offense. In red zone work, Russ Wilson had multiple TDs and finished the day with an 80-yard touchdown drive that highlighted a 34-yard fourth down conversion to Cortland Sutton and capped it off with an 18-yard TD to Trey Quinn. Montreal Washington, Greg Dulcich, and Darius Shepard, who just signed with the Broncos this morning, also caught touchdown passes from number three today. So like I said, a really good day for the offense. But don't take my word for it. Let's listen to the coach. Uh, Cortland uh, ran a beautiful route, and uh, I loved how he flattened it, and uh, Russ did a great job. We had great protection up front, and he stepped to the left, and. Uh, got exposed. My man Shep uh, decided he was he was going. He wasn't thinking about nothing else. And uh, it was perfect rhythm by the quarterback. Great protection, and uh, there was no indecision. And uh, yeah, he took the house. That was pretty funny. That was his first play, and everybody was mad. He's got to do more dirty work before he gets those. <laughs> but just because the offense is looking good doesn't mean the defense isn't also. Um, I'm happy to see both play both sides of the ball making plays though. That's what you want. You want explosive plays, and you want the, uh, the defense taking uh, the ball away, which is great about my position is I get to celebrate for all of it, so I don't, have, I don't need to get Unfortunately, the Broncos didn't get a week into camp before season-ending injuries claimed two players, running back Demaria Crockett and wide receiver Tim Patrick. The loss of Patrick means one less super reliable weapon for Russ Wilson, and the absence of a major team leader on the offense but also in the locker room. As Coach Hackett noted after practice on Tuesday, this is part of the game, unfortunately, so now it means others have to step up. You know, and uh, you know, a guy like Tim, who's such an amazing leader, um, that has done everything we've asked, you know, I mean, it breaks your heart because you love it. Now, on the flip side, it gives somebody else an opportunity to really grow and become a great player because um, that's what we're going to need. So I think that whenever you have these things happen, it's about supporting the man because we are about the entire team. But then at the same time now flipping it out and going, hey, now everybody's got to pick it up and somebody's got to show up. The Broncos are working on filling that void. They did so already by signing Darius Shepard, a former Packers wide receiver who played in 2019 on the practice squad and started a few games in 2020. His first play today resulted in a touchdown so he looks to be a contributor. That's also important since several other wide receivers are out. Tyree Cleveland is out with a throat injury. Kendall Hinton is sitting out a few days with a knee injury. And KJ Hamler, who is coming back from a season ending injury last year, is still slowly working into the full speed work. Hasn't done that just yet. Filling Patrick's void is not going to be easy as number 81 was one of the most consistent receivers for the Broncos in 2021. He started all 16 games, caught 53 passes for nearly 750 yards, and added five touchdowns. The Broncos will likely need to find another receiver with some size to match what Tim Patrick brought to the offense at six foot four. 200 pounds, he was a big bodied receiver who could get those contested balls, especially in the end zone. So far, it looks like Seth Williams, who is similar size, might be the first in line to take a crack at filling that spot. In the running back room, the Broncos added Max Borgie, formerly of Pomona High School in Arvada, a hometown kid. The Broncos signed Borgie following the injury to Demaria Crockett. On the recovery side of injury, KJ Hamler is back to the practice field, working his way into full speed work. And he noted this week that it has definitely been therapeutic for him. With some heartfelt words during his presser Monday, he acknowledged that he'd had some pretty dark days. It's been a tough journey, to be honest. You know, I wish I would have asked for help because, you know, at some point, it was at one point in my life, and I'm just be honest with y'all because I'm more vulnerable and, you know, more confident in myself about saying it. But um, at one point, I didn't want to be here. Like, I didn't want to be in this world. You know, I. It was one point I just didn't want to be on earth no more, you know, because I lost my, my granny and that really hurt me. Um, so just, just you know, God gave me the strength just to get out that hole and, 
you know, he knew I was strong enough to get through. I didn't feel like I was at the time. And, you know, just getting out that hole was just it's very hard and very tough. First, I didn't talk to nobody. I didn't talk to nobody. Um, I was in this little cocoon, wrapped up, and just, you know, kept everything to myself. I'm not afraid to tell y'all what I've been going through. It's been a tough year, you know what I mean? But, you know, y'all see me where I'm at right now. Y'all see that I'm still here, and, you know, I'm still working to be the best version of myself. So, um, you know, I know everybody around here is proud of me. You know, I'm proud of myself for where I came from, step one to, to right now. So just keep pushing from there. And we really appreciate you speaking out about the reality of depression that can develop when an athlete is injured. Thank you. <laughs> Getting back to football, the fight to be in line for edge rusher could be one of the toughest battles this camp. Bradley Chubb and Randy Gregory set to be the starters. We're looking for the third, fourth rotational guy. So far, Baron Browning has been having an excellent camp and looks to be a real possibility for that spot. Browning, who moved from inside to outside linebacker this offseason, is having a great camp and taking first team reps opposite Chubb while Gregory is out. Jonathan Cooper and rookie Nick Benito are likely next in line but Malik Reed would like you to remember not to count him out. You know, like, even though it's a, a new defense, I feel like my understanding of the game is, I feel like at an all time high, I feel like right now. It's just being able to anticipate things, uh, being comfortable uh, in the scheme, and being able to, you know, take chances and attack more, I feel like, in certain situations. So I feel like that's my IQ of the game, I feel like is what's at the next level. Now on the offensive line, the position battles are still open, but there are a few positions that might be solidifying. Quinn Minerts has been getting most of the first team reps at right guard so far, and Natane Muti has been working in with some of them. But Muti has also been taking reps at left guard, possibly pushing Dalton Reisner for the starting job. It's definitely Reisner's job to lose, and switching back to a zone scheme should benefit him, but Muti could give him a run for his money. At the right tackle spot, Calvin Anderson has been having a great camp and could walk away with that job, particularly until Billy Turner is able to get back and fight for the position. So, <laughs> there have been a lot of shining stars in camp, and many of them have been rookies, namely Montreal Washington. We talked about him last week. He was the 162nd pick in the draft came from Samford University in Birmingham, a small school that most people didn't even know had a football team. But he has been a prime target for Russell Wilson, catching touchdown passes just about every day, getting open, making plays, and he can even do a backflip. Tight end Eric Salbert is another sneaky surprise. He's been having kind of a quietly good camp, making catches, getting open, showing his experience, and could make a real run for being included in that tight end room. On the defensive side, I already mentioned Baron Browning, but let's talk about him again. He has reportedly been in the QB spaces all week, whether it's Russell Wilson, Josh Johnson, or Brett Rippon. And he's often getting there so fast that in a game situation, it's likely he'd get a sack, possibly even a strip sack, because the ball could still be in the quarterback's hands. That is what we like to see. All in all, it has been looking like a very good camp so far with great plays on offense, amazing plays on defense, a lot of players emerging as repeated stars, a lot of new players emerging as stars, and in general, a very tight-knit group that's forming under new coach Nathaniel Hackett. And Coach Hackett is feeling really good about where this team is now too. I thought we've gotten better every day. You know, I mean, yesterday we had the jog through, and to me, I, I, I'm shocked at how much we got done yesterday. I mean, we got way more plays than we had anticipated. The guys were able to mentally learn, get fresh, get their legs about them, so then we can come out here and have that high level of a practice. That's what you're looking for. You know, you never want to come out and waste a day in pads. They're so precious. We don't have a lot of those. Friday's practice is going to be another jog through before a pads practice on Saturday. The Broncos will have joint practices with the Dallas Cowboys at the end of next week, leading into their first preseason game against the Cowboys on Saturday. <laughs> Thanks for joining us this week for another recap. Before we sign off, I need to give a nice mile-high salute to Sir Lewis Hamilton, the latest addition to the Broncos ownership group. Hamilton is a seven-time world champion in Formula One, 
I think the seven might be significant here. As kind of a secret Formula One fan, thanks Drive to Survive, I love this addition. I love having Lewis on the team, so to speak, and love that he wants to be part of it. It's pretty cool to call him a Denver Bronco fan. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube MHR Live channel and then catch all of our stories on milehighreport.com as well as our fabulous Twitter game at Mile High Report. Thanks and go Broncos! Start Arvada's, oh my gosh. Bleh, terrible. Oh my gosh. Friday's practice. Stop doing that. Oh god, this is terrible. Blech.